Yes, let's see now two additional features that we can add, uh, that we can add to the cell model. So the first one is about adding uh, thermal uh, dynamics. So in case we want to uh, understand what's the temperature behavior of the cell, particularly during uh, heavy workloads and so forth, then we need to characterize the thermal properties of our uh, cell, of our system. We will uh, basically take the same uh, example and the same structure that we've been discussing for the household because, again, we have the same uh, type of uh, mathematical description to our problem. We had uh, discussed and introduced uh, three terms, or three components. So the first one is about uh, this current generator, which is just an electrical representation of uh, the thermal power that it would be generated inside the cell because of joule losses. That's basically what's heating up the cell. Then the other two components are the thermal uh, capacitance, which uh, again, it depends on the specific heat capacity of the, of the material that is uh, in the cell, lithium in this case. Um, and then the thermal resistance, which describe uh, uh, how well or how bad the cell is dissipating uh, heat towards the rest of the environment. And we have to be very careful because this uh, thermal resistance can change uh, really a lot, um, depending whether we have uh, active cooling uh, via airflow or through liquid, or in case we uh, don't have any cooling. And particularly if we are considering an individual or a single cell or a cell that is uh, uh, a pack of uh, cells, so they, they are clustered together, and of course, in the moment that they are close to each other, they could have a hard time to uh, dissipate the heat. So the uh, characterization that we want to add now, you will recognize that uh, the three blocks that we discussed in the previous exercise are just uh, the same. So we have the Thevenin equivalent here, the state of charge dynamic here, the explicit power calculation here, and what we add is the thermal dynamic in the same shape that we had before for the, for the household. So we have an outside temperature. We are considering always constant temperatures in this case, okay? But this temperature could actually change throughout the day. We have a thermal uh, uh, resistance. We have the thermal capacitance here. We are getting uh, the cell current to calculate based on the cell resistance, which I remind you at this point in time, we are considering as a constant value, the Joule losses that we get here in uh, Watt. Just for the sake of uh, uh, counting, we can count uh, how, many, how much energy is uh, lost throughout uh, uh, Joule losses. So it's just a question of integrating this power flow. But then in order to calculate the temperature, we need to keep, uh, we need to calculate the balance between uh, the uh, thermal power that is generated inside the cell, so our jaw losses, minus the power that will be dissipated throughout uh, the um, cell shell uh, or through active or passive cooling in case uh, that one is present. And then uh, we have the thermal capacitance here and we have our cell temperature. In case we have a variable uh, temperature in our system, then we would need to consider that this cell temperature would need to be summed to the uh, variable temperature that we have in our system. So remember, right now we are considering a constant temperature. So this value that we calculate, it's basically a delta temperature in that sense. Okay, we perform our uh, investigation. Where are we here? We use this parameter, so we assume a, a cylindrical cell, the usual, with uh, uh, these values for the mass, for the specific heat, and uh, uh, this value for the thermal resistance. We assume a, a balance in the beginning, so temperature 20 degrees, cell temperature, and uh, outside temperature as well. We start with a 50% state of charge, we set a discharge, to, uh, with a power that is, let's say, the nominal power, so 10.8 Watt for 20 minutes, starting at t equal to 10 seconds. And then we run the simulation and calculate thermal time constant and so forth. 
you will remember that the thermal time constant is defined as a multiplication between the thermal resistance and the thermal capacitance. So we perform the simulation for uh, two hours and uh, we get the results here. On top we have uh, the power uh, generated by our jaw losses. It's a bit more than uh, 0.3 watt. Uh, let's remember that uh, this cell is experiencing a power that is equal to um, 10.8 watt. So we have the hour power mission here, 10.8 watt for 20 minutes. That will be our open circuit voltage, our cell voltage. And then uh, the cell is resting after that. So it's not charging, not discharging or anything. So coming back to our temperature uh, behavior, you see here that I have enabled this option for triggers and uh, cursor measurement just to get also some uh, numerical information so to easily discuss the, the results. So right now uh, I have um, highlighted basically two uh, relevant points. So the first one we can see here in the second plot where we are reporting the cell temperature would be the temperature that we reach when we stop the uh, discharge action. So that's the maximum temperature of course throughout our dynamic simulation which in this case you can see here it's 25.29 uh, degrees. So we accumulated a little bit more than five degrees over the 20 minutes of operation. And then uh, we can uh, see how the system would evolve. As expected, we are experiencing a decrease which has an exponential uh, behavior. And uh, that's the usefulness of having this thermal time constant. We have that our thermal time constant, it would be 1,200 seconds. So what it means, it means that after one tau, so uh, at T equal 2,410 seconds, our temperature will be uh, drop a little bit more than 63%. Remember that uh, the calculation are quite, uh, are quite trivial. So the value that we have uh, after our dynamic, after our first time constant would be 36.79% of the initial uh, value, or rather of the difference between the initial value and the uh, environmental temperature. So what's the, the outside temperature? In case we want to get to 3 tau, then uh, the value that we get is the exponential of minus three. So that's the 5%, which is often used as a reference to say after three tau, we consider that our dynamic is over. So you see here, we have this temperature. Remember that our outside temperature is 20 degree constant and it has to be constant for us to observe this nice uh, shape. Otherwise we have also another dynamic that is uh, uh, adding up. So the residual value of the temperature that we will have here, which is this 29, uh, 21.95 degrees. So this delta temperature, so this 3.34 degrees, it's basically the 63% um, of the initial temperature uh, drop difference that we had in the beginning. So it's not the 63% of 25 degrees, but it's a 63% of uh, uh, 5.29 degrees. Okay, so we get that it's basically this number here. Hmm. And then we can uh, uh, basically appreciate how the cell is heating, cooling, and so forth. Uh, remember that this uh, cell resistance can considerably change depending a lot on the type of cooling that we have in the in the cell. So this type of increase or decrease of the temperature can change really a lot. And it's always very complicated to get uh, uh, reliable numbers uh, for that. But that would be the first uh, uh, edition of the, of the model. So that's about including the thermal dynamic. So what we're going to do next is to discuss the um, PI part. So we go back to the slides. Uh, in this case, 
what we want to add now is the possibility to control the cell voltage uh, through a PI controller. We remember that uh, the big assumption that we did before was to assume that we had a perfect knowledge of the cell resistance, a perfect knowledge of the open circuit voltage, and that was what was making possible for us to have an explicit calculation of the cell voltage that we have to apply in order to get the desired power out. That may not be possible because often when we are using the cell, we don't have a, a good picture of the open circuit voltage. We definitely have a more blurred information about the cell resistance. So as an alternative approach, in case we are uh, short of information, is to say, let's use a controller, for instance, in the shape of a PI controller. So the underlying structure of the system and the controller would uh, be uh, the following. So we have our system, so our cell. We have uh, our jaw losses, which constitute basically the disturbance for our system. The power of the cell is the measure uh, value, is our uh, state in this case, that we are taking as a, uh, as a measurement for, our, uh, for the input of our controller. We compare the cell power with the, um, the measure cell power with the reference power that we would like the cell to consume or to produce, we have the error. We feed the error to our controller. And what we control, of course, we are going to control the same variable that we would have set previously, so the cell uh, voltage. So how do we, uh, how can we realize this in uh, uh, simulating? So once again, it's uh, just a question of uh, replacing one system. So the system that we had uh, up here before that was making it possible to calculate explicitly the cell voltage depending on the open circuit voltage, on the power set, and on the cell resistance, and get instead a PI controller. So what, uh, how we want to design this uh, PI controller? So we want to design the PI controller considering that we have a, a measurement delay on the power, which is equal to 0 0.5 sec 0 0.1 seconds, so it's a very small uh, delay. Um, and then we consider a, a similar condition. So we start once again 50% state of charge. We want to set a discharge for uh, uh, 10 minutes with a power that is 10.8 uh, watt once again. And right now, since we are interested more in the dynamic uh, response of the controller, let's just focus on a much shorter uh, simulation time. So that's just uh, 60 seconds. And then we use the usual Ziegler-Nichols method to uh, do the tuning with our desired objective to keep the response within uh, three seconds. So the first thing, we don't need to run the simulation for so long, 60 seconds would be enough. One small detail, since we introduced a fairly small time constant that is uh, 0 0.1 second, then we need to make sure that uh, the simulation step is not too big. So I still keep in the variable step solver, but I'm forcing the solver not to go faster than 0 0.01 seconds. I do like that, and then uh, I uh, design my PI controller. I just keep the usual uh, structure, so I have my reference here. I'm designing the reference just for convenience with this uh, step, just to say that uh, I want to start with no power. I get to 10.8 watt after 10 seconds, and then, uh, uh, in this case, after 610 seconds, I want to go back to, to zero watt. But let's just focus on the first uh, 60 seconds. So here we have our reference. Down here we have the measurement. So we have the, the cell power. As you can imagine, the cell power will be uh, calculated based on the product between the uh, cell voltage and the cell current. That's how we get the cell power subject to a measurement delay, 0 0.1 second. Then I do the usual trick, which as I said, is just a, a personal preference, which is just to normalize the values with the uh, nominal power. I could have just avoided uh, that. The PI controller could still be designed. Of course, the gain uh, will be different. Uh, I have the gain here, that's the final values. We'll go through the usual uh, tuning. 
I have my integrator, my uh, gain up here, and then uh, my output would be my uh, cell voltage. Okay, so I have the number down here, which then I use to uh, calculate the usual Thevenin equivalent up here. Now, since uh, a couple of things before we do the, the tuning, the, the first one is about uh, um, this integrator. So since I want to start with a steady state, I want to start uh, with uh, uh, no power in my system. So it means that uh, I have to set the initial value of my integrator equal to 1, because I know that 1 multiplied 3.6 will give me a cell voltage that is 3.6. So that will make it possible at the beginning to have a balance between upper circuit voltage and so forth. The other information is that, of course, I'm, uh, that's an easy initial condition because I have an open circuit voltage that is constant and equal to 3.6 volt. But in case my open circuit voltage was dependent on the state of charge, then it could change depending on where I start my simulation. So I should be careful to make a proper initialization here, otherwise I will start with a dynamic. The second uh, option in order to avoid all this uh, uh, issue with the integrator would be to structure the controller so that uh, instead of generating uh, directly the cell voltage, we generate instead a voltage difference. So basically a delta voltage. And then we would use this delta voltage to uh, create the cell voltage knowing the open circuit voltage. But let's not complicate our lives too much at this point in time. So let's just uh, proceed in this way where we generate directly here the, the cell voltage. The usual approach would be to take both gains equal to zero, run the simulation for 60 seconds. I get my uh, results. And I see, of course, that nothing is uh, happening. So I have uh, my uh, reference power that after 10 seconds go to 10.8 watt and the cell power that does not follow because the controller is not controlling uh, anything. As you can imagine, we have this uh, result here on the open circuit and cell voltage that's just gonna be the same at 3.6 volt and there is no current flow. And that's also nice to see because it means that uh, the controller with no gains or with gains equal to zero is not messing up uh, anything. Then we usual we do the usual um, tuning. So we start by increasing our gain. I know already where I will uh, end up with the tuning process. So I know that this one will be my uh, critical gain. So I will experience my uh, cell power and my cell voltage, which will start to oscillate heavily. I can see and I can easily imagine that my uh, periodicity will be 0 0.2 seconds because that's the only real dynamic, the only real time constant that I have in my system, which is just the sum. Uh, it's just two times this measurement uh, delay here. So I have my critical time, I have my critical gain, and then I can calculate using the um, Ziegler-Nichols approach to get my uh, tuned values, and I will end up with these uh, two numbers. I'll double check once again the simulation, and I will see that I get the results um, as expected. So I can see that I have uh, here my uh, P ref and my P cell. I can see the ref, I can see that the power of the cell is basically reaching the value within a reasonable amount of time. And I have my cell voltage, which is decreasing uh, in order to allow the power to uh, flow. And that would be if I just want to see uh, voltages and currents. And that's it.